Welcome back to the CSS Grid course. I'm Zach and this is part of my full stack roadmap series where you're going from never having written a line of code to deploying your first full stack e-commerce React app. If you want to learn more about this series, here's a video you can check out, kind of introduces everything. There's also a bunch of links in the description as well as a playlist that gives you all of these videos in order, including this CSS Grid course. In the videos prior, we've covered pretty much everything that's on this screen except for the grid template areas. And that's gonna open up a whole different discussion that we're gonna cover in this video. Hopefully this one's not gonna be quite as long as the rest. Uh, we'll see how we get through the content. If you watched the prior videos, you should be pretty comfortable with this layout here. This was kind of the, the basic CSS grid challenge that I gave you. And we're gonna use this to explain this grid template areas property and also how to name our grid lines. I'll preface this discussion by saying that this, the grid template areas property and method is not required to use CSS grid effectively um, to use the system in general. But it is a preferred way of many front end developers and I wanted to show it to you. I kind of like it, so uh, we'll see, see what you think. So if we come down to each of the grid items here, we have three of them. And just to uh, remind you, we have a three by three grid. If we turn that on, you can see uh, what that looks like with all the lines. And if we come down to each of the grid items and we give it this property called grid area, this is going to define the alias that we use to, um, to basically tell this grid item where to go on the grid. I'm gonna give this alias something very specific, so gi1-alias, just something that we can't, can't mistake for anything else. And then I'm also going to give that to the remaining grid items. So we'll say this one is gi2-alias, then finally gi3-alias. This hasn't done anything yet we have to add one more property, which is the grid template areas property. And this actually goes on the main container. So these are all the grid items. This is the main container. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of these definitions here. So where they start and where they end. And we're gonna put it all in one property up on the container. Here's what that looks like. So grid template areas. And then we'll enter to a new line. You can do that in CSS just fine. Um, and we're gonna put three quotations and then a semicolon. All right, so what I've done here is I've made three quotations which are going to represent the rows within our grid. If you notice, we have three rows, so we have three quotations. And then within this, we have uh, space separated values where we place the aliases that we just defined below to define where in the grid we wanna place those uh, items corresponding to the aliases. Let's get rid of all of these positionings so that you can see this happen in real time. So the first item needs to go in this grid area between column one and three and row one and two. So if this is our first row, this first quotation is our first row, then we just need to put gi1-alias in there. And what you'll see, what you should see, oh, that's my bad. It's not gonna populate until we have filled it all out. So let me just, let me just do that and you'll see what happens. So we want um, the first one to go in these first two. And then if I remember correctly, we want item number two to be in this little box. And then item number three to be on the far right side, taking up the entire height of the column. So in order to do that, We'll pass in GI1 alias for the first two. So you can think of this as we've got the first row right here and the first two columns are going to be represented by GI1, so grid item one. And then the last column is gonna be grid item three. And then we come down here and we say this will be GI2 alias. And then there's going to be something um, weird here. So we're gonna put uh, something for an empty space and all we have to do is put a period and then follow that up with GI3 alias because once again the second row in the third column should still have grid item 3 and then 
finally, we should have a period for empty space, another empty space in GI3 alias. And boom, all at once, you see how that um, aligns everything on the grid. And as you can see, here's the empty space. And if we were to space these out a little bit so you can see it better, so let me line all these up. You can start to see that this grid template areas actually looks like the grid and we've replaced, um, we've kind of done it visually. So we've taken all of these grid areas from down here and we've placed them in their appropriate spots up here. And this is where the Firefox dev tools come in. You can also click this display area names. You've, if you click this before and nothing happened, it's because we had not defined this. Once you click it now, you can see that we have GI1 alias for these first two, GI3 on that right side. So pretty cool way to visualize what we just did. The last thing I wanna show you in this video, um, it's not something that I use personally. I don't really find a need for it since I generally prefer this grid template areas method. But if we delete the grid template areas method and we delete all these aliases down here, you're gonna see the, the items pop up in their default positions. And what we can do with the grid template rows and columns, we can actually name the rows and column indicators. So instead of one, two, three, four, we could call it you know, start column and end column or something like that. So let's go ahead and do that. All we have to do is extend this out. So the rows, we'll extend it out to one FR, one FR, one FR. So that's the same thing as repeat three, or uh, three comma one FR. And all you have to do is put in brackets and that will be the name. So whatever precedes it will be the, the name of the line. So I'll put in our bracket placements here, extend this out a little bit. So instead of, we're looking at rows right here. So instead of this one, two, three, and four, it's going to be, uh, maybe we wanna call it uh, column start, or sorry, not column start, row start, and then this will be row end, something like that. And then this will be uh, just, just R2, something generic to put in there for now. And then if you were to come down to grid item number one, and let's say that you wanted to extend the height of it from uh, row start to row end, you can just say this. So you can say grid row start is gonna be row dash start, and grid row end is gonna be row end. And you'll see that that extends to be within that area. So as you can see, there are many, many ways to uh, dictate how these grid items fit with on the grid. You can use the grid template areas, that's my preferred way, or you can explicitly name these lines, or you can just go with the old fashioned, you know, look at the numbers on the Firefox dev tools. It lays it out nicely for you, one, two, three, four, and you can place your items that way. Now there is one more topic I forgot about, and that is uh, something that's been overarching to this whole course on CSS Grid. And it's the topic of how do we use Grid and Flexbox together? The previous course I did was on Flexbox, so why would I create one on Grid 2? Like aren't these competing frameworks or systems? The answer is no, they work really well together and you've already seen it happen a couple of times throughout this course. On the screen, I have a few basic rules of thumb on when you should use grid and when you should use Flexbox. But in general, you'll get an intuitive sense for when to use one or the other. And I'll show you an example here really quick that might help us understand this better. So what I have on the screen here is a basic gallery, photo gallery that I created with CSS grid and Flexbox. And it kind of demonstrates how we can use them together. Um, you'll really get a sense for it in the next video when we build our you know, holy grail CSS layout. But this is not far from it. We have a header, which has you know, some title and then maybe a few nav links or something like that. And then at the bottom, we have this small little footer. And then between there, we have a scrollable grid of images that I just pulled from pixum.photos, which allows you to get some random pictures on the screen. Now pause the video and see if you can determine on the screen what I'm using grid for and what I'm using Flexbox for. 
CSS Grid is great for high level layouts and therefore what we're using Grid for is going to be the entire header and then the entire container that we put the pictures in and then finally the entire footer. So we've got basically what we would call, I guess, three rows and then the columns is going to be three columns because we have three pictures across. Now the Flexbox piece of this is a little bit more subtle. So these, uh, the text up here and the link up here and then the link down here are using Flexbox to quickly um, arrange those elements within their containers. So without uh, Flexbox, it would be a little bit difficult. I mean, you could do it with some uh, auto margins, but all we'd have to do here uh, is set the flex direction to row, which is the default, and then put space between for justify content. So I think that's what I had done here. So let's look for the header, or the nav bar is what I'm calling it. And you see that I've said display flex, and then justify content is space between. Now, just to show you what's happening, if we put this to center, those are gonna go um, to the middle here when we reload, and that's not what we would want. So if we undo that and put it to space between, it spaces them out. Likewise, at the bottom with the footer, we're just displaying it as flex and justifying the content and aligning it to center so that it's aligned horizontally and vertically. Like I said, you'll really start to get an intuitive feel for when to use each of them in the next video when we build kind of our, our capstone project for our CSS Grid course. If you're gonna stick around for that project, I'll see you in the next video. If not, thanks for watching this CSS Grid course. I hope you got something from it. If you did, please leave a comment, like, subscribe. Please help me out. It's uh, entirely free for you to do so and it really is appreciated. All right, that's a wrap. I'll see you in the next video.